Welcome to Homeroom, the podcast presented by One Church Home, featuring different guests, hosts, and topics focused on building a solid foundation rooted in the Word of God. This podcast was created for those who desire to grow in the will and ways of Jesus. OCH believes in the God-ordained call for believers to commit to their local church. We ask that you would only consume these resources as supplemental and not as a replacement for your local church community. Let's jump into the conversation. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Homeroom, the podcast. My name is Lacey Feltz. This is our second episode where we're diving in to just really learn what the heart of worship really is. My next guest is actually the same guest we had on the first episode, Miss Faith <laughs> We love having you. Thank you for being here with us. Of course. I do want to get to the bottom of something that's really been on my heart, and I've been in prayer about it. Mm-hmm. Really, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nothing that serious. I want to know if you could create your dream worship oh, band this is terrible. out of anyone living passed away from some celebrity musicians. We want to know how you would build that team with who. That is so hard because, A, <laughs> I don't remember names. So there's that. Okay, you can just be like the drummer okay. from blah, 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 band or whatever. Um, who's your, who's your like, who's your drummer? I would we'll take, start there. I will just take Fred Hammond's band all day, every day. <laughs> I will just take them. That is the easy road out, but, but a good choice, but for honestly. Real good. Like, I would take them all because, like, it's killer. And then singers, though, oh, snap. Cece, hmm. all day. Okay. Like, come come to my side. Like, come <laughs> be with me. Um, and, oh, shoot. Any special background singers? They don't have to be Christian artists. They can be, like, any band Ever. You could have any band? Anyone. Rascal Flats vocals. I know that's so silly, <laughs> but I loved them that's growing great. up. So I mean, yeah. like, why that not I have am? some boy band, Ooh. like, you know, three part okay. dude harmony? Okay. I love that. Well, all three of them. All three of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And gosh, I don't know. I don't know who else. That's a really hard this question. Gary Lavox from Rascal Flats. He's yeah. Lavox, Laveau. How do you say that? Do you know? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> is he your lead singer or is CC? No, CC's CC. lead. Okay. For sure, all day, every they're day. All the vo- they're all the they background just get vocals. To they're yeah. just in. He might get a BGVs. solo. BGVs. Maybe. Okay. But he's definitely, they're back there. She's front and center. Whitney Houston, all day, every day. <laughs> all day, That's a good day. choice. A lot of people say Whitney Houston. A lot of people. So those two would be the lead and... Me and the three dudes would be the backup singers. You're in your band. In the band. That You're I just created. You're amongst your celebrities. <laughs> Good to know. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> well, that's a really great band. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for playing. You're welcome. <laughs> that's really hard. That is pretty hard. Um, we usually have we have a fun game where we ask all new staff members that. Mm-hmm. And we get some really crazy answers. But yours was the quickest, surely. Well, it's because I can't remember a squat. <laughs> so I can't okay. remember people at the moment. But that's the one I came up with for this. That's okay. You did great. <laughs> I love that band. I wish they had an album right now. Honestly. Me too. That'd be really Me too. Great. So let's dive in a little bit into what we have already been talking about. It is what is the heart of worship? We want to answer that question. What is the difference between just a worshiper or worship music, or what we consider to be quote-unquote worship, and what is a heart of worship. And we've arrived to, it's a lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of dive in deep with this first question. Why do you believe it's important for Christians to realize that worship does not start and end during our four-set song set list on a Sunday morning corporate worship service? So it's it's tough because we've been conditioned, I think, um, as churchgoers that we're going to the worship service, right? We're going to worship, um, and I think we talked about it in the in the last one. But we said, you know, come worshiping, mm-hmm. don't come to worship, but come worshiping. Um, it just it if we come with that mindset, then we know it doesn't start with the first note, or you know whatever that thing is that tickles our fancy, you know? Um, Some people have said to me in the past, like, oh, it takes me until about the third song, and then I'm really worshiping. And I just 
that that always gets me because I hear it very often. Um, and it's like people have to warm up to like really get into the groove. Yeah. And um, that just shouldn't be the case. Again, I'm guilty, super mm-hmm. guilty. I'm not you know, casting stones. Yeah. Um, but I, I would hope and pray that we can learn that if we come worshiping, then we don't expect for worship to start mm-hmm. at the first song, mm-hmm. that it actually starts with me driving in my car with my kids, mm-hmm. that it starts with me putting my feet on the floor and asking the Lord to help me for the day. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts immediately. Yeah, I love it. Um, do you feel like that the heart of worship is, just for you personally, is this a muscle uh, you know, you know, the harder you work a muscle, the stronger they are. Do you feel like having a heart of worship gets easier the more you practice having a heart of worship through like hard situations, good situations in the valley, on the mountain, like that type of um, gro- does growth come with a heart of worship, or is it just one hundred percent off out the gate? Right. Um, I would say that there's mountains and valleys for me. Um, in the way in which I respond to the Lord, which is our worship, right? Mm-hmm. The lifestyle of worship. Um, it, it's never because He leaves or changes or moves. I do. And so when I find myself not, quote unquote, like feeling God or like feeling like I have been moved in any time of any kind of like a worship thing that I do, mm-hmm. um, it's generally because I've moved. Mm-hmm. I've I've become less and less closer to the Lord based on me not being in His Word. Mm -hmm. So I find that um, it is a muscle because I have to, like, be an active participant in learning about Him Mm -hmm. in His Word. Um, And that comes differently in seasons of life. You know, like, some seasons are so busy that all we have is a podcast to listen to. Some seasons we can really dive in for an hour into into the Word and you know, digest every single word. It's not about what you're doing. It's just about the heart of it. So am I actively trying to learn about the Lord? Um, You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like being married to Shane. It's like, if I'm not actively being a participant in his life, um, our relationship is strained and we start to kind of like, you know, go our separate ways. Now, again, the Lord doesn't leave in in the relationship between he and I, Mm -hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm actively seeking him out, it is a muscle because I'm I'm having to do it. I'm having to make the decision to do it. And then my worship, whatever that looks like, um, comes easier because I know him better and I want to serve him better mm-hmm. and I want to love his people better. Mm-hmm. And so worship does become, in essence, easier mm-hmm. because I just, I want to, I want to serve him. Yeah. I love that. Um, you had some great quotes in our last episode. Um, you brought this one, which is really beautiful. And it's um, from w- William Temple. It says, Worship is the submission of all of our nature to God. It is the quickening of conscience by His holiness, the nourishment of mind with His truth, the purifying of imagination by His beauty, the opening of the heart to His love, the surrender of it will to his purpose, and all of this gathered up in adoration, the most selfless emotion of which our nature is capable, and therefore the chief remedy for that self-centeredness, which is our original sin and the source of all of our actual sin. Mm -hmm. Like that is like, to me, just a really beautiful quote that someone's giving about worship. And there's so many quotes here and there that we hear, um, some more simple, shorter than that, some that are just diving into. And a lot of it comes from what you just talked about, like the growth of someone through their learning experience of who God is and and expounding in that worship and that worship of His character grows and grows and grows the more we know of Him. Mm -hmm. There's more material to want to worship, right? Yeah. such a beautiful quote. I'm sure you have some of your own quotes or we have some of our like worship mottos and things that are beautiful to say, but I want to get down to what is, well, maybe I should just ask you first. Do you have a definition of worship? Yeah. Um, it's it's so interesting because I think we live in a microwave society. Like we've, I mean, I think there's many of us that have said those words, but 
um, when we look at the word worship, the etymology of the word, the study of where the word came from, um, it gets to this thing where it's worship, right? And I think as Christians, if you've been around any time at all in the church world, you've heard worship. I'm giving God His worth, mm-hmm. and that to me is a microwave definition, yeah. right? It doesn't really fully unveil what is giving God His worth. Who is this God that I'm giving worth to? Right? Like it doesn't answer those things. And are we assigning how much he's worth doing that? Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's like there, that's why I think um, really looking and diving into de- like people's um, just kind of heart in worship is so important because it is so great and grand that, you know, like we can look at, we can look at one definition and still not scratch the surface. Like that one is absolutely magnificent and beautiful. Um, but most of us, like for me, including, I won't remember that every day. So I'm like, what, what can I, what can I do? Like, what can I do to remember what worship is to me? And I was talking to Shane last night and just asked him, you know, like, what's your definition? Cause it's, that's a hard thing to ask. And he literally just said, it's a lifestyle of obedience unto God. And it comes in many forms. And I was like, perfect, simple. simple. Like that's mm-hmm. something that I can like digest and I can take with me and not just saying giving God his worth. Because if I'm telling somebody that like as an unbeliever, they're like, well, what does that mean? Because mm-hmm. what is what is his worth? If they've never, they don't know the they character don't, of God yeah, yet. Yeah, they don't know him yet. Mm-hmm. And so that, that to me says a little bit more, but um, I had a mentor one time tell me that um, he says his definition is I love you too. Like it's a response to like how how great our God is and how much He loves us, and it's not an "I love you," but it's an "I love you too." Mm-hmm. So I'm giving all of my self back to you. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, um, because of um, the privilege of of leading people in song, um, I have a definition, but it's you know it comes from being um, being in music, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Worship is not a platform, microphone, tempo, or specific song, but an attitude, a lifestyle, a place to stay. So that's something that I take with me. Like I have to remember um, Mm -hmm. that this is this is what I do. But obviously, it doesn't define me. But I think for musicians, especially being in the beautiful city that we're in, um, we can compare with one another. And um, I have to remind myself all of the time. Mm-hmm. that it is not those things yeah. at all. And it is completely about my heart and my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And am I bringing my lifestyle to the platform that morning? Can somebody look at me and go, the way that she lives, I can I can yes. follow that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really, really important to me. And so again, like we can have a million different definitions. It's just what do you need to be able to, to remember mm-hmm. what worship actually is to you? Yeah, and when it comes to you, worship music, you know, we've all been led in worship and some of us have led worship and weekly I'm reminded like if I, you know, if I didn't have an actual voice, if I was mute or like just couldn't speak or couldn't sing or whatever, like would I still be able to worship every day? Yeah. Yes. 100%. One hundred percent, and the heart of worship, like that foundation underlying thing, when people come into a service and they go, "Okay, I'm bringing my worship. I brought it with me," and they're bringing their heart of worship with them. It wouldn't matter if no one on the stage was talented at all. Whoever was leading them into worship. The distractions, every distraction was coming towards them. The sound was off. The lights were flickering. The LED screen wasn't working. I don't know what churches people go to some days that like there's smoke machines and there's all crazy stuff. And then there's some churches that don't have any of those special extra effects or things that make it like, you know, a production. They have very just like the lights are all on and they might have just like lyrics up on the wall so that they can sing along and be at the same part of the song at the same time and have some direction all of that is not our worship. All of that is music mm-hmm. at the end of the day, no matter what that looks like. Or all of that is production. But what makes worship out of that is the people coming with their heart, coming, bringing their worship into that place. And I don't know about you, but I've been on stage with people that were on a worship team, and it was like, 
okay, I can't wait for next Sunday's gig or like whatever. And it was like, if you wanted to just sing or play the guitar, be a drummer, be a sound guy, you can do that on Broadway down in Nashville. You can do that any, you can do that at your house. You can have a home studio. You can put out albums. You can do all those things. But as it um, revolves around worshiping, it's the heart. It's not the talent. It's not the desire to just be like, I want to sing for the Lord. Like that's even not heart of worship. Mm -hmm. That's just you wanting to sing out loud in front of people. You know what I mean? So um, being able to recognize the differences of those things and go like, hey, like the foundation isn't there. Mm -hmm. If the foundation of the heart of worship is not underlying and, and holding up what we experience in a worship service or what we experience in our day to day lives, it's all just lip service. It's all just lyrics or vocals or whatever, none of it really has any meaning or Mm -hmm. isn't really in step with like the Spirit of God anymore. So Um, that reminds me of the scripture in Matthew where it talks about these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's so many things we can say about about that, right? But that's just everything right there. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes when I've been on a platform, my heart has been far from Him. And I was just doing the thing that I needed to do. Um, I feel so often, like when I hit hit the platform, like I should not be here, <laughs> right? I just shouldn't yeah. be here um, because I feel so far away from the Lord. I feel like my heart isn't in it. Um, so we're as worship leaders, we're not exempt from those things no, um, at all. It's just I I hope that the ones that I I am led by hear from the Lord and repent. Say, I'm sorry, like Lord. I need you, mm-hmm. and um, I think that's just the most Im- most important thing. We can judge a judge an outward expression all the day long, but mm-hmm. the Lord looks at the heart, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just I love that about the Lord. It's like I can bring my brokenness to Him and just be like, I don't, I'm not feeling this today, or I don't feel close to you today, and that He honors that. Mm-hmm. He like receives that worship. Just bring bring what you have. Um, I love that about the Lord. My mom, growing up, she used to tell me, like, one day you're going to be married, and not every day are you going to feel married. Right. But you're married. <laughs> so it's like the same thing with the Lord. Like, I may not feel the Lord or feel like I have a, you know, mm-hmm. commu- communion with the Lord in that moment, but, like, He is there. Yeah. He's not leaving. He's not leaving or forsaking us. He's there, and it's our commitment to go, oh, I acknowledge you, yep. and I'm going to worship anyways, totally. whether I feel it or not. Yep. You know? Absolutely. So we've dove into what is your definition, these people's definition, the quote here, quote there. What does the Bible say the definition of worship is? Yeah. So um, I, again, like it, we're going to keep like hitting this uh, nail on the head, but <laughs> it's it's lifestyle, okay. right? Yeah. Like that's mm-hmm. what worship is. And so um, in Romans 12, 1, this is what it says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Mm. So again, there's nothing in there that says singing is worship. That's right. <laughs> Where it's, it's saying your body, what you do, all day, every day, is your true worship. Mm-hmm. And so what, again, again, we just have to go back to like, how am I living? How am I living? And I think it's it was kind of an eye-opening, you know, when you read the Bible, like the, the Holy Spirit illuminates something that you've read a million times, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh my gosh, like a, how did I not notice this before? Um, but just even the the greatest commandments, right? So love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. The second like it is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. That is worship. Mm-hmm. Like if we just need something really boiled down to be able to stick in our pocket and go, that's it. So if my body is is what, what worship is, what I do with it is worship, mm-hmm. If I do those two things to the best that I can with the Holy Spirit's help, um, then we're worshiping. Mm. And I just think that's so great. We don't have to get it right and perfect every single time Mm -hmm. because we won't. Mm -hmm. Um, But if we can fall back on those two things, then I think we're doing a pretty good job. I love that. 
Um, you did bring a lot of scriptures with you, but one of the scriptures that I just love so much um, was in Psalms 95, 6. It says, Go come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Um, it says, Worship is the attitude of your heart. It means to bow down in adoration. So like yeah. going from, hey, we love the Lord. Mm-hmm. And we love others. And we're doing that with all of our mind, our strength, our body, our mind, everything in it. There is a specific other extra cherry on top, which is the portion of worship where it goes above all else. If I was anyone else in the world, if I was dead, if I was whatever, it doesn't matter what my world looks like at the end of the day, I... It's not about me. Mm-hmm. It's about kneeling down before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And I believe this is happening in heaven every single day and will continue out through eternity. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Yeah. No matter what I'm doing, even if I messed up and didn't love my neighbor, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or di- or forgot for a minute to love the Lord with all my strength. It doesn't change who God is. And out of knowing that God does not change, our adoration is yeah. is a, 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 a moment to go, hey, I, I, I am me, but God is God, and God is forever. Totally. And God is always worthy of all my praise, all my adoration, all those things. Like, that should bring you to your knees. Absolutely, yeah. In a humble position of worship mm-hmm. before the Lord. And that can be— in your mind, that can be actually on your knees. So I just love that scripture a lot because it doesn't really talk about like us yeah, and our part in worship. It's just saying I, like no matter what, he's the maker, he's the creator, he's the alpha and omega, he's the start and the finish, and it doesn't matter anything about us. Yeah. We, we just have to bow. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, a, it's a heart posture, right? It's like, it's like, um, when you when you do kneel down, when you when you create a posture, something changes in your in your mind. Mm-hmm. Like you're, it just all kind of aligns. Same thing with my heart. If I posture my heart as such, if I remember that He's the Maker and Creator, if that's my heart posture, my heart posture is what's the style this morning. Mm-hmm. Things change. Mm-hmm. Like our job as as leaders in song is to create an environment where people can come um, and repent about not loving their neighbor very well, right? To create an environment where where they're able to meet the Lord um, and remember that this is why that they this is why they came. Mm-hmm. And so um, I I love I love that, but it makes our job hard because we can't see what's going on inside of people. Only ho- the Holy Spirit can help illuminate those things for us so that we lead well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I I love the I love the fact that we're all created differently and that we can come into a service with whatever we're carrying, remember that He is the maker, heart posture, our hearts the correct way, Um, but we can sit and be silent. Mm -hmm. Like we can flail our arms around. We can, there's so many different ways, but again, it's the posture of our heart. That's Mm -hmm. all that matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Romans 12, one says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, be the mer- by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So that just goes back into like, hey, we are created in His image, but that does not mean, but we live in a sinful world and we will do things wrong and we have to come right mm-hmm. in our worship and and look at our hearts and go, am I a living sacrifice? Do I do I have something that I need to repent of and take off of me before I enter into worship as a true, like, holy and acceptable um, heart in front of my Maker? And I just love that scripture because it's like, our, our, present your bodies. Yeah. Give of yourself. Yeah. He created us, but we're giving it back to Him as a living sacrifice. We're doing, I mean, and He's He did that for us, right? Mm-hmm. So we're just going like, everything you've done for us, we want to give back to you because totally. you are worthy of it all. Take yeah. it. 
Yes. Take it. I sacrifice it back to you. So it's just that goes back to your heart posture during worship is like just way beyond, oh, I like the lyrics of this song. Mm-hmm. They make me feel good. Right. Or, hey, I helped a neighbor out. I must be a good Christian. I am, you know, living a lifestyle of worship. It's just a lot more nuanced than that. Mm-hmm. There's so many steps, so many things. It's not saying that you have to do all of that all at once. If you could, you'd be a perfect human being for <laughs> sure. But like, there's so many um, uh, prism sides to to what worship really is, having a heart of worship. Yep. The next thing I want to ask you about is in that scripture, you said Mark 12, um, 30 through 31, the end of that is talking about you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than that. So there's this portion, this piece of that scripture scripture that's talking about service Mm -hmm. to others. Um, So talk to us a little bit about what that looks like. If I'm not a pastor, Mm -hmm. if I'm not a minister, if I'm not a caretaker by trade, I'm not a nurse, I'm not this, like what does that portion look like in the heart of worship? For sure. Well, I I mean— Jesus gave us the best example. Like he came to serve, not to be served, mm-hmm. right? And um, and that's always kind of on my forefront is like, how can I serve somebody greater than I would serve myself? Like, how can I put you ahead of me, um, even if it's not going to benefit me mm-hmm. in the long run, and it might benefit you? Like, that is that is so important. It can be done at any time. Like, if if all of if if y'all listen to the last podcast, I gave a good example about toilet paper. <laughs> you so go better listen have to listened to the last podcast. Don't do this out of order. <laughs> Don't do it. But it's it's anything. It's it's how we serve one another. Like opening a door for somebody, like that's service. You know, like smiling at somebody, that's service. Um, I'll give you another bathroom example. They are always in the restroom. I don't know why the Lord does this to me, but Great. I was in a restroom. I was in a restroom, and this woman. Um, I was at work, and this woman was using the handicap accessible stall, which is the one that I can only go into because the door is so wide. Mm-hmm. And um, she was in there. I just waited, and she came out, and I just smiled at her. And then we went about our business. Well, about a week later, I saw her, and I didn't know who she was, but she was. Um, a cosmetic rep or something. And she ran up to me and she was like, I I know you probably don't remember me. You don't know me, but I was in the bathroom when you were in there. I was using the only stall that you could use. And um, she had just tears in her eyes. And she came out and she said, all you did was smile at me. Mm. And you could have gotten mad. Like you could have been like, lady, you know? Um, But that was my act of worship to the Lord. Because like, even though I had to go to the bathroom and like I, I needed to use that particular stall. It kind of was annoying that I couldn't use it. Um, she came out and I didn't know her, but I loved her well just by giving her a smile, even though that I probably didn't really want to in the moment. Um, that's an action of service. Mm-hmm. That's me serving her over what was actually happening inside of me. Yeah. So we have opportunities all day, every day to serve one another. Um, and I think if we're on teams, like we should be serving the weakest link to our best of our ability. Yeah. Like, how can we do that? Um, so yeah, there's just stuff we can do all the time. We at, at one church home and at many churches, there's we are a volunteer led <laughs> group of people. Currently in a um, elementary school, our church is set up from the ground up. All the kids' ministry, all the welcome areas, all the coffee and donuts that we give away every Sunday, the entire um, AV system and all the stage and lights and stuff, that is built like it's church in a box, honestly. And so we have been doing that for a while. We're about to embark on building a building. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be wonderful. But we count on the fact that we are going to have just as many volunteer positions when we get into that building and we don't have to set it up from floor to ceiling as we do now in elementary school that we change all the way into a church service every single Sunday. Why? Because we believe that our volunteers have ministry on the inside of them and that they're called to serve others. Mm -hmm. And part of that service, it doesn't matter if you're doing it during your week for others, or if you're on the parking team during a Sunday morning service, a lot of, you know, times we call um, 
those types of departments and church services, oh, the parking volunteers, the hospitality volunteers, the whatever, we at One Church Home want to change the mindset of what that is. We've changed uh, our verbiage from using volunteer to host. We want people to be hosted Mm -hmm. and served well. And we want to create a table like if it as if it was our own home and we go, hey, our we've called ahead. They like these types of foods and they have these allergies and they love these types of flowers. And we set the table in our church service and then we welcome people in and go, hey, we want to serve the least of these or we want to make sure that the table is set well. That is our service. And that in um when done in and joy and in thanksgiving and in service to others is the heart of worship. We're creating space for us to continue our heart of our heart of worship in our services and none of those departments have anything to do with music. Totally. Yeah. It's the first person who walks on in drives into our parking lot. Yep. The very first person that yep. they see is a parking attendant. Right. And that parking attendant is ministering and mm-hmm. serving well and has a heart of worship before they've even entered the building. Yeah. So that in and of itself should tell you like worship service or church service where the music of a service is not the heart of worship. It's not the only way to be a worshiper. Totally. So I love that so much. Thank you, Faith, for mm-hmm. just diving in a little bit deeper with us on what it means to have a lifestyle of worship and not just be a mute, you know, a worshiper when it's time to have our four songs during Sunday morning yeah. services. Um, in our next episode, guys, we're going to dive in just a little bit deeper, give a recap of what all this means, and we hope that you're enjoying this. We'll see you in episode three. <laughs>